I can't believe it's December 1st. It's it's crazy. The the like the year is almost over. So this is the the perfect way to start the um to start the to start the the season, I think, making making ponches. Um oh, I just got a message from Lola to sell my um my to share my social media handles i i will absolutely um i will do that so that everybody can follow me and if you're making the bunches along um please please share um i'm gonna write my instagram actually is at art bites if you're cooking along please share um how many of you are cooking i can't see anybody but if you want to just type it in how many of you are making bunches alongside with me today Anybody? Or just drinking rum or <laughs> Ovelia is or just or just drinking along. So Ovelia is great. Well I can't we wait. A couple of hands raised in oh, the, good. Uh, yes. Okay, perfect, perfect. So we're gonna make three bunches and definitely like Morgan said, um, if there's something that you make at home, definitely just type it in. I really would love to hear your stories because there's so many ones, so many different bunches. The ones that I'm most familiar with are the Mexican ones which are rompope, which is like a Mexican eggnog that we're going to be making today, and ponche, the ponche navideño, the Christmas ponche, which is, um, which is this warm punch with fruit and spices, um, and it's, it's really delicious. They've, this one is, they're both usually served spiked, um, but you don't have to spike it. But then there's so many others that I've discovered kind of studying this, researching this, Coquito, which is a Puerto Rican version that we're going to be making today, which is like a eggless, um, like an eggless rump, like an eggless eggnog, um, kind of, but it's coconut based, um, and it's 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 very very delicious. Um, there's also something in uh, a ponche in Chile called cola de mono, which means tail of the monkey. In Cuba, there's crema de vie, um, which is cream of life, which has this, this sort of French flair. That's a little bit of a mix between the Puerto Rican coquito and the Mexican eggnog. Um, there is the ponche crema in Venezuela. That's also a bit of a mix. Um, so there's lots of different types of punches or ponches all over um, Latin America. But the word ponche comes from punch. Um, so, and the word punch is actually comes from a Hindi word, panch, P-A-N-C-H, um, which basically was is, is a punch that was made um, in ancient India. Actually, the, this whole idea of drinking an alcoholic beverage, a big batch of an alcoholic beverage in a large bowl, um, is actually something that goes back to ancient India and also to Persia. Um, so this whole idea of serving something huge, a huge batch of something delicious and boozy to share at celebrations. But traditionally, this word punch means five, and they have five different things in it. Um, so it's basically, it's alcohol, it's some sort of water or fruit juice, some sort of citrus, um, sugar, and spice. So whether it's cinnamon, nutmeg, so it's basically those five things traditionally. But there are so many different variations. Of course, we're using milk um, in the rompope. We're using evaporated milk and condensed milk, egg. So there's kind of a variation. But this whole idea of a, of a punch is something that goes back. That's not Latin American. It's not European. Um, it goes well to the, to the east, um, to India, and to the Middle East. Um, so we're making three different things. Um, so I thought that I would kind of start simmering some of the liquid for the both the rompope and the Christmas, the ponche navideño, um, and then we'll make the the coquito. And while we're going, I will I will share um, histories of these different um, punches or ponches that we're making. Um, but first, I'll get all of these delicious liquids simmering. Um, so right now I have, um, cause we we're making three and we have, we have one hour. And as you know, I tend to just go and go and talk and talk for like, I could be here for three hours. Um, but I have a, um, so if you're making the recipe, the, the recipe that I sent, I'm actually making half of the recipe. 
Um, so I actually have a, a pot of water, of eight cups of water here, 16 cups of water if you're if you're making the, the full you know batch of recipe. Um, and I'm gonna simmer it with half of a cone of piloncillo, which is basically sugar. It's the it's the product of sugar cane. And the things that are traditionally in the Mexican ponche are guayaba or guava, as it's called in, in the US, um, tejocote, which is this tiny little, tiny little fruit that looks like a little crab apple, and sugarcane, which we have right here. So this is already, you know, peeled sugarcane. Um, and piloncillo is something that we see a lot of Latin America. It's basically the, the sugar cane is peeled, pounded, and then that liquid that's, that comes out of the sugar cane is then boiled to produce, you know, the different levels of sugar from molasses to just your, your, your white super refined sugar. So this is kind of that idea. It's a little bit like brown sugar, except brown sugar is white sugar with a little bit of molasses added to it. This is just the pure sort of form of sugar that's then put in a little mold of a cone, um, which is basically what the word piloncillo means. Um, it's also called in, in Central America, they called it panela, and it's exactly the same thing. So I actually used half of a piloncillo in the water. I already put it in there already because it takes a little bit of time to, to dissolve, um, but I wanted to show it to you because it's so, it's so pretty. It's kind of like uh, brown sugar, like I said, but it's, um, it's much sweeter than, than brown sugar. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna just season, just, just get the, the, the liquid kind of simmering. So I have water, I have some piloncillo, I'm going to add some cinnamon sticks. I'm gonna add two cinnamon sticks. Um, and this is Mexican uh, cinnamon, which is a little different than the, than the you know, Vietnamese or those um, cinnamon, it's a little bit more, I don't know, spicy is the word, um, but it's actually native to what is now Sri Lanka. Um, Ceylon is what it's called, which is where the our word cinnamon comes from. Um, but this kind of Mexican cinnamon is, is a variation of that. So I'm going to put these two cinnamon sticks in there with the water and the piloncillo. Um, and then right now I'm going to add these uh, tejocotes. Um, which is this this fruit that's native to Mexico. Um, it's actually native both to Mexico and to whoops and to um, South uh, South America, um, but it's been cultivated for millennia. And it looks like little tiny apples. They look like little apples, and sometimes they're called manzanilla, which means like little apple. Um, so they're usually either yellow or kind of orange like this. Sometimes they're sort of reddish and they have these little black. I don't know if you could see it well. They have these tiny little black dots all, um, all over it. Um, they're in season this time of year. So if you go to any Mexican market, you will walk in and you will see a whole table full of tejocotes and the whole store will smell like this. It will smell like the guayaba and we'll get to this in, in a little bit. Um, these were cultivated by the Aztecs, you know, pre-conquest. This is something, again, it's been cultivated in Mexico for, for millennia um, and really used medicinally. They have a ton of vitamin C. So this, as does the, um, as does the guayaba, they have a ton of vitamin C. So this is, medicinal. I mean, these fruits appear this time of year, cold and flu season. Um, so this is definitely something that's really quite, you know, medicinal almost. Um, so I see, um, I see the question, would I recommend apples as a substitute if you can't find them? They're really different um, than apple. It, it really, I'm actually, I'm also using um, apple in this, but the apple is quite sweet and a little bit tart. Um, if you get a really good apple, it's crunchy. This is not crunchy. This is very mealy um, and it's really acidic. It can be eaten raw, um, but it's, it's really not that it's really not that good. It's a little bit acidic again, and it's mealy. When it's cooked, it's tart and it's sweet. Um, it has a lot of pectin, so it kind of thickens. It's used a lot in 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 jams. Um, so Lola, I think you're in you're in Colorado. I think you could probably either if you can't find them fresh, um, there oftentimes you can find them if you go to a Latin American market. You could find them preserved. In, in a in a jar, um, but it is it is quite different than than um, 
than an apple. Um, the Nahual word for the tejocote is tejocotl, um, which is means stone fruit. It means, or not stone fruit, it means it's just stone because it has these little, um, like two or three tiny little seeds, you know, in inside. But it's an interesting, it's an interesting fruit. You see it a lot of Day of the Dead altars. Um, oh, would quince work? Maybe quince would work. Maybe that's a little bit closer to it. Um, gosh, it's hard to, this is such a unique kind of flavor. Let me slice one so that you can kind of see what it looks like. Not that you could taste it. I wish you could, you were here so that you could you know, taste it. Um, but let me just, just to kind of give you a visual of, of the, of the fruit. Um, so it's really, they're really tiny. They're, I mean, sometimes they're a little bit bigger. They can be up to, you know, two inches, but, um, they're, the stone is right here in the middle. Should probably use a smaller knife, but um, so I have my little stone. But actually, let me just do this, and this will be really soft when I when I put it in the. You, you'll see at the end of class when it's been simmering for a while. Um, so you have this like stone on the in the middle. Sometimes it's up to three little stones. Um, so. But it's it's I don't know if you could tell the texture just from it's a little bit pliable it's it's kind of it's kind of um, mealy like I said um, but maybe quince would be would be close ish um, but I'm gonna put these in with the um, I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna put this in with my water that is that is simmering oops sorry it's wrong camera <laughs> technical technical difficulties. I'm going to put them in so that they really can soften and get a lot of, you know, flavor. But this uh, um, was one of the most important fruits and one of the, you know, one of the many incredible fruits that are native to to Latin America, native to Mexico specifically. I'm not going to peel them. Um, so this is everything is kind of cut in bite sized pieces. And this is a punch that's served warm. So I'm not gonna slice them. I'm just gonna put them in whole and they'll really kind of open up. But I'm gonna stick these little guys in here. So I have my, um, and I have about half a pound of them, of these little guys in here. Um, and I have to think about what would be a good substitution. I haven't really should have thought about that. I like the idea of quince. Um, although the quince is so, Euro, you know, such a European uh, fruit, and this is so, that's so old world, this is so new world, but this is this, this punch, this ponche is very much like, um, like mole, that is just the, the blend of old and new world, you know, ingredients. Um, this is certainly that, um, with, you know, the sugar that's native to India, um, that made its way to America post-conquest, um, the cinnamon as well, native to India, and then you have these fruits that are that are from that are from Mexico. So it's kind of this interesting blend. We have a bunch of other things that are going to go in there, uh, which I'll get to. Um, but right now, I'm just going to lower the heat a little bit, and I'm going to let that simmer. Um, it already smells. I can already smell the the cinnamon, um, but. Let me see. So sorry, I was just looking at the questions. Um, I've never, Lola, I've never seen. I've seen them in syrups. Um, so like a like yeah, like it like cooked in simple syrup. That's the only other way that I've seen that the jocote. I've never used it in, it in anything other than other than the the sponche. Um, and yeah, and this is the time of the year that you that you see the ponches, so that you see them everywhere. I'm sure they're used for other things, but I've never actually used them for anything but this. Um, I'll take care of the okay. email okay. thing. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll, I'll keep going. Um, so right now, I'm just going to let that simmer for about 15 minutes, um, and I'm going to switch over to get the milk and cinnamon simmering for the for the rompope. Um, or is that too confusing if I go from one recipe to the next? Maybe it's okay. Okay, so I will I will just I will just continue. So I have the base of the ponche um, of the of the Christmas ponche right over here in the front, and in the back I'm gonna get some our liquid simmering for the for the rompope. 
So the rompope is basically a Mexican eggnog um, that was developed in the 17th century by nuns in convents in Mexico. And this particular um, drink um, was developed in a, a, a convent, the Santa Clara convent in Puebla, in the in the state of Puebla, that's in Mexico City. So pretty much the, in the in the colonial convents were preparing things like you know the the mole that we have today and these types of rompapas. You can still in different parts of Mexico. Um, I was in Mexico City last summer and uh, we went into there's so many churches and so we went into the, the churches to like look at all of these beautiful paintings and altars and everything and outside there are there were nuns selling rompope. Um, so this is just a basic rompope um, but you do see them made with almonds or walnuts or pine nuts. The pine nut is just this beautiful pink uh, pine nuts that are native to Mexico. We're just gonna make a basic a basic one here. So I have um, two cups of milk. I'm using whole milk. Um, so I'm just gonna add two cups of whole milk, um, cinnamon. Um, so again, in this one, I'm just using, I'm making a small batch. I'm putting a just a half a cinnamon stick on here. And then I'm going to add two cloves. I love the smell of cloves. Um, so they smell like Christmas. Two cloves, um, which are also you know, native to India. So many things that we don't even think about that are from other parts of the, of the, of the world. Um, I'm just gonna do about half a teaspoon of vanilla, which is native to Mexico and one of the most delicious flavors, ingredients. Um, and then I'm going to add just a little bit of nutmeg. So here's my little, the little tiny fresh nutmeg, which literally looks like a nut, but it's not a nut. Um, and this is also native to the, to the Spice Islands and, you know, in Indonesia, sort of around there. And I'm just going to add a little bit. We see a lot of nutmeg in, um, in punches. It's one of the most, even, you know, going back to like the European punches, nutmeg is the main thing. And nutmeg was super popular, very, very, very expensive. Um, there was thought to be this powerful, you know, charm, protect against the plague. We should all wear it. Um, so it was this, this protector, people would wear it as an amulet. Um, and also it had these powers of making people charming. I'm going to another part of the world right now, but um, they said that when people would go to a party, it was not uncommon to take a whole nutmeg and stick it underneath your left armpit and just it would make you more charming um, to the people at the party. So just a little aside and it's just it's it's it just just a little bit that I put in here because it's such a strong flavor um, and I'm just going to let this I'm going to put this over here for now I'm going to put this on the back burner which is just a little bit stronger and just let that just simmer for a few minutes let me raise the heat on this um, so I just wanted to simmer just, you know, in the back there, the um, milk is going to become infused with the spices. Um, and here we're cooking our little um, our tejocotes and it already smells very, very, you know, vanilla-y. I'm not vanilla-y, cinnamon-y. There's not, no vanilla smell yet. And in the meantime, um, I'm going to make the coquito. Um, I'm very excited about this coquito. I, I just, I like saying coquito, just that, that is enough. Um, and it's this, it's a Puerto Rican dish. Um, and the Puerto Rican I've, I've learned, I lived in New York for many years and I was kind of surrounded by that kind of Puerto Rican culture. And I love the music. It's so, you know, lively and it's so different, like the holiday songs. It's not like in the US, it's like Silent Night and all of these things that are so, you know, kind of, a little bit sad and there it's all salsa and it's all sort of, sort of lively and this drink it's as well it's just it's it's so lively um and the word coquito literally means um little coconut um coconuts are also you know we think of the caribbean and we think of you know coconuts everywhere they're also um native to southeast asia and we're another one of these ingredients that were that were brought over um i see some some comments 
Um, Sandra, you should start wearing. Yeah, I think we should start wearing nutmeg again. Um, yes, I love that idea of just like little little nutmeg, you know, amulet. Um, so this is a drink. Nobody really knows, you know, where it came from, like what, what its origins are. Um, and it's something that you see the recipe that's passed on from generation to, to generation. Um, so, and it's a cold drink. And basically, except for the poncha, the, the rompope of the Mexican eggnog is also typically served um, either chilled or, or on the rocks. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a, in a little bit. Um, but the coquita is definitely served chilled um, and it's blended. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, to add a one can, I have everything over here. This is one can of coconut cream. Um, that's slightly, that's different than coconut milk. Um, coconut cream is basically, it's about four parts of coconut um, coconut uh, flesh with one part of water and coconut milk is more, you know, one to one. It's more of the, the consistency of, of regular of regular milk. Um, so the rest, there's lots of different types of recipes, but it's essentially a lot of coconut, a lot of coconut, you know, milk, co coconut um, cream in this case, um, and condensed milk and evaporated milk. That's kind of the main, the main thing. So I have, uh, I just put my coconut cream in there. I'm gonna add one can of evaporated milk. I'm just gonna add that in here. This is gonna be so rich, so delicious. Just keep adjusting my, my heat there. Um, and one can of Condensed milk. This is my weakness, condensed milk. I had to, um, it's quite dangerous. I almost ate this whole container before class today, but I held back. Um, so one can of condensed milk. And then the spices. The spices are such an important part of these bunches. It what's, kind of gives it a, um, this kind of festive flair to it. So we have those three milks. I, I didn't use coconut um, milk in this. Some recipes have coconut milk. I thought that might be too much since the coconut cream is already so, you know, so intense. Um, and I'm gonna add some cinnamon. So I have some ground cinnamon right over here. So about, whoops. So I have, that almost boiled over. I think I stopped it. Okay, nothing happened, nothing to see. Um, so I'm going to add some cinnamon. I'm going to add about a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of cloves. I have a little bit, about an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg that I ground before. And then I'm going to add a good amount of vanilla. Um, and that's it. This is so, oh, actually, no, that's not it. What am I saying? I'm going to add a cup of uh, rum, a cup of white rum. So this is also the main thing. So this is the booze. Um, so about a cup of white rum. You can also use the dark uh, rum, but most recipes call for white rum um, just because it keeps it this sort of white, you know, color. The, the darker rum kind of changes the, the flavor um, a little bit. Um, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to blend this really well. This is it. This is the simplest, um, the simplest recipe ever. Um, oh, sorry. See that there's a, there's some message from email. Yes. Um, I got the email stuff. We did have one comment that, um, Ophelia tried coconut condensed milk to try out in that. So that will be, um, oh my gosh, that sounds delicious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, and, I yeah. oh, I was going to say, um, does it alter the flavor if we were to use lower fat milk or low fat condensed milk? Um, it probably does just because it's sort of naturally low fat, uh, just tastes different. I've never had low fat condensed milk, um, but I would try it. Why not? You know, why not? Less guilt. You can eat more cookies. Um, <laughs> 
But yeah, I, I would absolutely try it. I, I'm sure that the the again the the flavor is affected because of the nature of using low fat ingredients. But um, but I think that you should definitely taste it. Um, I think it'll be try it. I think it'll be delicious. Okay. Uh, one more question. Sorry, before I no, um, please feel free to to to, <laughs> to just ask the questions as we as I go. You don't yeah. Well, they all popped up at the same time too. Uh, <laughs> um, can you use Mexican canela stick for for which one? Um, that came in for this last one. Um, um, for this one, yes, you could definitely. I would. I would just uh, grate it um, because, or yeah, because you really want this. This I'm going to blend this, so this is going to be really, really smooth. Um, so I would suggest ground cinnamon, um, ground cinnamon in this. But you can use the Mexican one and just ground that. Grind that. You could get one of these little, either a spice grinder. I've never tried grinding cinnamon in something like this. Um, I wonder if it'll work. Yeah, definitely. You could just get one of these little, um, one of these little, little gadgets or a little spice grinder. Anything? Uh, any other questions? Yep. Some coquito use egg yolks. Do you recommend? You know, I've never tried it with egg yolk. Um, and I was, I'm not a huge egg fan personally. I, I actually did not eat my first egg until I was well into my thirties, believe it or not, um, just egg like that. So, um, so I was really happy to see a recipe that without egg. Um, and, there, and there's a lot of controversy between coquito with egg and coquito without egg. There's certainly both exist. Um, the most traditional is the one without egg, um, but both versions actually do, you know, do exist for sure. Um, there is actually a Coquito Masters competition um, every year. All, they have them all over from, they're based in, the Coquito Masters are based in New York and they have a, a, a competition every year at the Museo del Barrio, which is in, in the Bronx. It's a great museum. Um, and they have this competition. They also have them in Philadelphia and Florida and Wisconsin, like all over. They have Coquito Masters competitions um, with all of the nuances. So I'm sure there are there. From what I understand, there are two schools of thought: Coquito with egg and Coquito without egg. I'm going for the Coquito without egg only because I have a thing about about eggs. Although I do love a good rompope um, because it's cooked. It's cooked eggs. Um, but I would def definitely, you know, try it, try it both ways. Anybody right, that's on the question so far? <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, so I'm just going to blend this really well. I have a funnel over there and a, and a bottle, and I'm just going to put it in there and chill it. I'm going to stick it in the freezer so that it could be pretty chilled uh, before, um, before the, the end of class. So I'll be right back. Um, so... So simple. Let's see. How pretty is that? I can smell the booze. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so decadent. Kind of splash. I need to slow down a little bit with my pouring. There you go. Out of curiosity, um, when you're getting your ingredients for these, were you able to get most of them in one place, or did you have to go to a couple of different places? I had to go. Whoops. To I, I did have to go to a couple of different places um, for the that a little bit too much um, just because the sugar cane the cocote and the and the and the guavas were, were were a little more difficult to find um so those i got a lot of things i already had but the cocote and the sugar cane um and the gua guava i had to i had to go to a mexican market to to get those yeah um, gotcha. i'm just gonna dump a little bit out um so that I could close it. Look how pretty that looks. I'm so, I'm so pleased. Um, so I'm actually just going to put this in the freezer. 
just so that it could, it could be nice and nice and chilled. Um, any any questions as I um, but yeah, that's a good question about the about the ingredients. Um, so no, I, I, I could I could not find everything in in one in one place. Um, kind of had to had to go to just just to, to two different places is what I had to go to. Um, so that you could keep the coquito, you could keep refrigerated four to six months. It could it could it could stay. All of these punches, um, maybe not the this one because it has the fresh fruit in it, um, but it lasts for they last for a pretty good amount of time um, refrigerated um, because of the really the the alcohol that's in them. Um, so this. I'm going to um, just bring that back up. This has been simmering for a little while, um, so I'm going to add the rest of the of the ingredients to the to the boncha before we move on to our to our um, to our finish with the with the with the rompope. Um, so, any questions? Oh, fresh sugar cane. Oh, yeah. So that was the question, um, Sandra. Fresh sugar cane is definitely best. I could not find the fresh sugar cane. I have seen it in different um, markets, but I didn't want to go to lots of different markets. Um, so I went to one. It's a very small Oaxacan market in um, in Koreatown in Los Angeles. Um, but I I did find the the a pack of the frozen. Um, it was basically like a vacuum sealed frozen um, sugar cane, which is already basically already peeled. Um, so and it's so it's so pretty. It's so it's 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 so pretty. I remember as a kid, we would always do these road trips um, to Mexico City and we would stop at the side of the road and cut some sugar cane and just kind of chew on that um, when we were in the in the car. Um, so I'm going to add two pieces of sugar cane to this um, liquid that's simmering, it has the fruits and the cinnamon. So I'm basically just going to add those. Um, I'm going to also add some Jamaica. Um, sometimes it also has tamarind pods. Um, and these are also, we think of, you know, tamarind is so, is so Mexican, um, but, but it's not. It's native to India as, as well. Um, and Jamaica, which are these, you know, hibiscus flowers, you normally see it um, in agua fresca and, you know, the, the drink, um, which is so delicious or, or in popsicles, you see it also a lot. Um, but this is actually native to West Africa, um, and it made didn't, it made its way into Mexico in the 16th century on the, the Manila galleons that were bringing ingredients in, you know, into the into Mexico and then back other ingredients like chocolate and vanilla back out. Um, but they started cultivating this in Jamaica in the 1700s. So it's called Jamaica, Jamaica, because cultivated in Jamaica, also has a ton of vitamin C. Um, so you have things like this together with the with the tejocote has a lot of, of vitamin C. So it really helps this this ponche really helps boost the immune system. So I'm going to add about half a cup of the hibiscus flower to this. And normally this whenever you put this in liquid, it turns everything a bright, bright, bright red. Um, this is already so brown because of the because of the um, the piloncillo that's in it. So it's not really going to turn that bright red, but it's going to give it a really nice. There's so much sugar in this already with the piloncillo and then with the with the sugar cane that it's just going to give it a nice uh, tartness, a nice you know balance. So I put that in there, um, and now I have the guayaba, these, the the guava, um, which is so lovely. It's it's so incredibly fragrant. It's one of the you know it's one of these you know things that I, I remember. I grew up on the border of Texas and Mexico, and we used to buy a lot of fruit across and bring it over. And this was you know in the seventies, eighties. Um, so we used to put it in the car and my mom used to light a cigarette so that you can smell. So this is one thing that's like, oh, my God, he's so busted because this is so fragrant. Um, but actually, the tejocotes is the fruit that has, was most confiscated by customs well into the 90s. Now it's com cultivated commercially in California, but it wasn't for many years. But this is one of the fruits that it's like, oh, you can't really hide it because 
it really it's so it's so fragrant um so this one i'm going to um also native to to mexico um and i'm just gonna chop this one up so that it could be in sort of smaller bite-sized pieces and put them in there so this is a fruit that's in season right now um it's the, the seasonal fruit um so i'm just gonna slice it into six you know pieces let me just switch the camera over so that you could see it, what it looks like inside. Um, so it has all of these tiny little seeds. This is delicious, just like this, just just um, just raw. I ate like four of them today, and I had to, you know, save some for the class. I almost, you know, ate all of them. This one is a little. They're so um, so 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 delicious. Um, also. This is their peak season, lots of um, vitamin C, like I said, lots of um, antioxidants. It really is this wonderful, wonderful fruit. So I'm just going to keep, you know, adding some of this in here. Um, again, it's this interesting mix and I'll, and I'll show the, put the camera on, on the pot right over in, in just a minute. Um, so I'm also going to add, so this again, the Puerto Rican coquito, the Christmas season, holiday season in Puerto Rican, in Puerto Rico is quite long. Um, they start celebrating during Thanksgiving um, and then they don't stop celebrating until the until the middle of, of January. So it's kind of a long season. Um, and in Mexico, you see it around this time again of the holidays. Um, you also see the sponche during uh, posadas, which are these Christmas, you know, parties that you see in Mexico. Um, so I'm going to add, so I have, again, I'm just going to repeat what I have. I have the tejocotes, I have the cinnamon, um, the, the, guaya, the guava, I'm going to add some raisins to it. It's just about a quarter cup of raisins that I'm going to add to this. This is so amazing, this fruit. Um, and then I'm going to add some prunes, some of these, these little, little prunes. Um, again, these are also these old world, but you can kind of get a sense of it's kind of sweet. It's a little bit tart um, and also so many different textures happening in this in this pot. Um, so this you would ideally let this simmer for a good 30, 40 minutes um, to really get all of the flavors, but it's looking really, really good. And the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, an apple to it. Um, so I'm just going to peel an apple and, and just add it. And then we'll start working on our, I guess I don't really need to peel it, but I think I'll, I'll go ahead and peel it. Um, and then we'll start working on our, on our rompope. Any questions or comments or anything? How's it going? Those of you that are making it at home. Well, I peel my apple. We had um, one second half about the sugar cane. Um, if you're buying it frozen, does it need to thaw or can you put it in frozen? Oh, um, you know, I I did thaw mine. I did thaw mine, um, but I think you could probably just put it in frozen. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's fine. Yeah, I'm sure it's fine. I don't know what I'm gonna do because it's a whole bag. I don't know what I'm gonna do with the rest of the, with the sugar cane. If anybody has any ideas. Because I thought a bunch of it. It comes mm. off, you know, vacuum packed. Mm. Um, I got one more. What type of apple are you using? Um, I think it's just a Fuji apple. Um, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm, I usually either buy Fuji or Gala apples. Um, it's one or the other. I, it's yeah, it's one or the other. I'm not really sure. It's 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 what I had. Oh, did I see mojitos? There you go. <laughs> Sounds talking. like a good one to me. <laughs> that's, good. I, that's a great idea. That's a really good idea. Mojitos. Um, I need to get some more rum. I used all my rum in, in the in this class, and I mean in this for the coquito. Um, so we they um, the traditional rum they say that's that's used for the coquito is don don q the letter q don q um which was the first the, the, the family run you know rum business so they say that that is the that is the rum to to use um it's not what i'm using but i kind of wish i i was using it um but let me show you what this 
I'm gonna show you what this looks like because uh, it looks so pretty. Um, I know in the recipe you said for the ponche, if you do want to make it alcoholic, a rum or tequila is good. Do you have any recommendations on those? On the on what kind of tequilas? Sorry. Yeah, you, well, there's this is a shameless plug. My brother ha has has thick, <laughs> sees tequila, but this is what I have here. Um, you can find it in, in San Diego and in, in some places it's called Rejon. Um, there's also, I love Don Julio tequila, I think is really, is really good. Um, there's, I'm trying to think what other tequila, Herradura tequila I really like. Um, for this, I typically use like a, a white tequila, the, 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 the Blanco. Um, what else is good? Cazadores is also a good tequila. Um, I think those are, those are the, those are the ones that I, that I tend to, to, to use and, and like. Um, but if anybody has any other, you know, ideas, I always like to hear of, of good, or if anybody knows of good, you know, rum, like recommendations for, for rum, I'm not a big rum drinker. Um, so the bottle of rum that I had, I've typically have had for years, I normally just use it like for baking. Um, but if anybody has some, some good rum recommendations, because um, I have a feeling I'm going to be making coquito a lot this season. <laughs> um, but let me lower the heat here so that you can see this is just simmering. And then we'll move on to our um, to our rompope. But it looks so, I can't wait for you to see it. Look at that. How beautiful does that look? Oh, goodness. Wow. Yeah. And you could definitely see, you know, the apples turned a little bit red. That's from the, that's from the, Jamaica. It's definitely from the hibiscus, um, but it's kind of this brown, you know, red. It's just this gorgeous, gorgeous, you know, colorful drink, and it smells really, 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 really delicious. Um, really, really fragrant right now. Um, so, oh, so good. So the little. So this will be simmering. Um, I'll probably let this simmer for a good uh, half hour. Uh, 20, 30 minutes. Um, so for a good half hour, I'll let this simmer, but we'll taste it, you know, together. Um, I see the Maestro Tequila brand. I've never seen that, Avelia. That's a good, that's a good tip. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to move this back and just bring the milk back over um, so that we can start working on our, oh, I did it again. Sorry about that. Um, so that we can start working on our, on our rompope. Um, but I mentioned that, let me just you know, move this back. Um, I'm just gonna put this back here and keep that, let me raise that heat a little bit. So I have the milk here, it kind of boiled over a little bit and it formed a little film. Let me just remove that little, that little film. Where am I going? Let me put it in here. Um, well, so the so the bunch is, so there's this uh, the 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 posadas, um, which take place um, right before Christmas. They start on December, I think it's December 16th, and end um, on Christmas Eve. I'm just removing the cinnamon stick and the clothes. I'm trying to find the clothes that are in there, but. I don't know where they are. They probably maybe they came out with the with the little skin that I removed. Um, so it's just the hot milk there. Um, just pour a little bit more back in there. Um, so there are these these fest, these parties that happen, and they sort of they are essentially the time when Mary and Joseph were finding a safe refuge um, for her to give birth to the baby Jesus. So it starts on December 16th and it goes until the Christmas Eve. Um, and so they, they knock on people's houses, people's doors um, for, you know, every night asking for posada, which means asking for a place to, a, a safe place to sleep. So they have these parties in Mexico. Um, a friend of mine growing up threw the best posadas every year, which was basically just people just sitting around drinking ponche. Um, but people, there, there's the, there are the, 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 the whole neighborhoods, you know, go from a house and they sing songs and, and then they sit down and then they eat very traditionally over Christmas. It's tamales, it's hot chocolate, it's champurrado, which is like a hot chocolate with a, uh, corn uh, meal, not corn meal, like masa that's thickened. 
Um, and of course, you know, bonche. So you see it a lot, you know, and this is essentially, this is, these fruits are in, are in season, you know, right now, um, which is why we, which is why we see that. Um, so that's brewing. The milk is, is, is ready. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to get the rompope ready. I mentioned I, I spilled a little bit of condensed milk on there, but that's okay. Um, so this happens, um, so the rompope I mentioned uh, was first made by nuns in convents in Mexico in the 17th century. Um, so it's inspired by a type of, of punch uh, popular in Spain um, called ponche de, ponche de huevo, egg, egg punch, which is essentially uh, an eggnog. Um, the difference between rompope and eggnog is that rompope has, um, has egg yolk and eggnog uses a whole egg. Also with rompope, the egg is cooked. Um, with eggnog, the egg, the, the egg white is usually just beaten. Um, so, so it's so I think maybe that's so it's, it's typically not the, the eggnog that you buy in the store today. Of course, it's pasteurized. It's very different. But the traditional eggnog that's made as home is is traditionally uncooked egg. Rompope is cooked. There is a nun named Eduiges, the Eduiges the nun that apparently made the best rompope. She never said what her secret ingredient was. She took it to her grave, um, but she was the one that kind of, but, but she made the best rompope and raised a lot of money for her convent. And um, and she basically champ. She was the big champion to have the church allow these nuns to drink it because they weren't allowed to drink it because it has alcohol. Um, so it typically has either rum um, or you know, whiskey or brandy or, or cognac. Tr traditionally, it's either rum or, or some sort of um, some sort of uh, aguardiente, which is which is just just an alcohol, like a, a cane alcohol. I'm going to add a little bit of, of whiskey um, to mine. I love this whiskey. This is actually I just discovered it not that long ago. It's a Mexican whiskey. It's it's 100 percent. It's made of solo. It's made in it's made in Mexico um, and it's 100 percent corn based corn, 100 percent corn mash. Um, it tastes a little bit like tequila, um, but it's it's really it's really lovely. Uh, so I'm just going to spike mine with that. Um, but what I have, I have our, my, my warm milk here. Um, and then I have some egg yolks, just the egg yolk right, right over here. I'm making a small batch. I have um, two egg yolks. Um, and then I'm going to add um, half a cup of sugar. So this is just a regular white granulated sugar. I'm going to add that to my yolks. And I'm just going to let me just switch the camera over so that you can see what I'm what I'm doing. Um, so so it, I'm just gonna whisk this together until it's just yolk and egg, and just get this kind of nice and smooth. I have a little bit of condensed milk in here, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. So super, um, you see how it looks so creamy and the, it's not as yellow anymore, it kind of lightens in color. That's kind of, that's what we want. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to temper this. So let me just flip this over, flip this over to the side. Um, so basically, so you see how it's kind of nice light color. I'm gonna temper it just by adding a little bit, a little bit of milk to it. Just a little bit, a little bit at a time. Um, if I add this whole um, bowl of egg, of raw egg to the, to my milk, I'm just gonna end up with scrambled eggs, which for somebody who didn't eat eggs until not that long ago would be, Hell. But you can kind of feel that the bottom of the bowl is getting a little bit warm. So I want my bowl to be warm and look how pretty that is. So this is called, this is called tempering. I'm going to add a little bit more. Um, and then I'm going to add all of this to the pot. Now I can feel the bottom of my bowl is nice and warm. So I don't have to worry about ending up with scrambled eggs while I put this into the hot milk. So that's what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to pour this in here. 
turn the heat back on because the heat has been off. And I'm going to pour the egg mixture. Make sure I have all this sugar. And then I'm just going to cook it until it thickens. Basically until it coats the back of a spoon. And this requires a little bit of patience. It's worth it. This is really, really, really tasty. So I'm just gonna just keep cooking it until and you know that it's ready when you literally when it says that you um you you have I can't remember how what I wrote in the in the recipe um, where it thickens enough to coat the back of a spoon, which literally means that when you kind of go like this, it's not thick yet, um, it's not thick enough yet. But that kind of it's, it leaves a line like that. But we need to thicken it a little bit longer. Um, so while this goes, does anybody have any questions? I know we have a few minutes left. But um, I'm gonna keep this going, um, and then we can, well, and then we'll taste everything. But does anybody have any comments or questions while I keep this going, or um, any experiences cooking along, making punching along? I think they're probably stirring. <laughs> they're probably stirring. This takes a little bit of time. Um, and like um, I said, so this is the, the typical rompope. It's just the egg yolk, um, vanilla, some cinnamon. But you can also make it with, um, with nuts. The pine nut one is really, the Mexican pine nut is really lovely. It's like pink. Um, it tastes very different than the pine nuts that we have here, that we find here today. Um, and that they they have lots of different kinds. I love seeing the nuns. It's like these traditions that are that just don't end. Um, so this is typically served chilled, um, and you can also buy it. You know, there's a, a brand of eggnog of Rompope called Santa Clara, which is the name of the convent. It has no affiliation with the convent, um, but um, you you it's it's a it's a commercially available uh, bottle. You can find it everywhere. It has a little none on the on the cover um so this is this is actually ready i'm going to flip over so that you can kind of see okay and we've had a couple of questions pop in just now too okay. um do you have the the rompope on a low flame i do i do have it on a low flame actually kind of medium medium low yeah I want a little bit. I won't, don't want it too high, but here you can. I'm gonna flip over again so that you could see what it looks like. So you see how it has um, thickened. I'm gonna turn this off the heat now. You see how much it is thickened. It's almost like a, not as thick as a custard, of course, but much thicker than than just the milk um, that we had. So or, or how it was when when I started. Um, so this is basically this is basically what you want. And then you know this is really nice served, um, served chilled or served over ice. So you, you see how you can really, you go like this and it really, mm. the, the line kind of, oops, the line stays there. That's when you know it's ready. I'm gonna remove it from, from this. Oh my gosh, it's very, very cinnamony and delicious. I'm actually gonna move it over. Um, Cause I don't want to, I want it to get off that, off that hot, but put this back here. So I'm ready, I'm ready to taste. Oh, Lola, do you love Mexican pine nuts? I think they're blended. I've actually never made them with Mexican pine nuts. Mexican pine nuts are, are, are magical. Every time I go to Mexico, I come back with a bunch of Mexican pine nuts and, I'm, and I ration them. Um, but yeah, I think they just blend them. Um, I'm not really, I've never, I've never tried it, but I think that's, it's, it's probably so, so, so delicious. A uh, couple more too. Um, how did you find the abasolo and what does it taste like? 
The Ellis Tunnel I found, I, I taught a class recently. Um, it was a private class. They asked me to teach a class on sacred grains of Latin America. So it was a class that was all about corn, whis uh, corn whiskey, corn, um, amaranth, and quinoa. And I wanted to make something not masa because I'd already done that with this group. Um, and so I asked a friend who's a big whiskey connoisseur, but what bourbon is made with the most corn? Um, Cause it's typically, you know, 50, 51% corn mash. I was like, which one has the most corn? And maybe we'll start with a cocktail. And she was like, oh, there's this new, they could have, they've only been around, I think since 2016. So it's quite, or 14, 16, it's so quite a new company. Um, and I got it at, and it's hundred percent ancestral corn. And I got it at Bethmo. So it was, it was easy, it was easy to find. Um, and so when do you add the alcohol to the rompope? I typically wait for it to cool before adding it, um, just because the hot, um, it's, it's with, if you add it when it's hot, it's, it will kind of cook off the alcohol basically. So typically wait, you know, wait till the, wait till the end. Anybody else, any other question? Um, the whiskey is to go with the ponche or rompope? The whiskey is to go with the with the rompope. Um, so I'm just going to serve a few. What did I do with my? Oh, here they are. They're right in front of me. So <laughs> yes, the whiskey is served. To the, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to just give this ladle a quick a quick wash, um, and I'll be right back. And I need to get another ladle. It's useful. I only have one too. <laughs> I actually, I just re remember, I have a little, a little uh, soup one over here that I'm gonna give it that. So I don't have to put it on pop in. And then there's this beauty. So let's serve it all. Um, so I'm going to ladle the ponche. And this, um, Probably don't, I, I, you definitely want to get some of the fruit in there. Let me switch this over so that you can see. Um, it looks like everybody only has one ladle. Um, so yeah, so you're definitely going to put some of the fruit in there. And even the, the, the hibiscus is so good. I made a hibiscus uh, Jamaica quesadillas the other day. Oh my God, they're so delicious. So I'm going to just spoon that in there to eat that as well. Um, so this is, look at that, look at that beauty, whoops. Um, so this, I definitely, this is for the, with the tequila. So I'm gonna spike, um, spike this with a little bit of tequila. It's delicious as is, um, or, you know, you could just add a little bit, just add it, you know, to taste. I wouldn't put it on the whole, in the whole drink, um, only because this is something, that's really nice for, you know, a fam more of a family type of drink. You want to just make sure that you, you, you know, everybody can, can drink it and just add some of that separately. Um, but there you have, you have that. Let me get a little spoon to, to kind of make sure that it's all really nicely mixed in there. And then for Coquito, I'm just gonna serve. It's actually pretty, pretty nice and, and chilled. I might just keep it in the freezer. It's not gonna freeze because of the rum in it, but it'll just be really nice and a little bit icy. Um, oh, I think I'm supposed to, let me, let me just mix this up because of the, all of the fat in the, in the coconuts. Maybe it's not a good idea to put it in the, in the freezer. I think all of the coconut milk is settled to the top. Oh, well. I thought I was being so clever and that was just a bad idea. Let me stick a, a, a skewer or something in there. So we're, we're only a few minutes. If you bear with me just a few minutes and we'll get this, get this out of there. So now you know not to stick it in the freezer like I did. Um, let's see if this goes. We're fine. We're all excited to see it. <laughs> there it is. Can you see it? Yeah, you can see it's coming out. Um, and this, I'm just gonna garnish with a little little cinnamon stick. Look how pretty that is! Cheers. And now I'm going to I'm gonna pour some rump up in this glass. Even though I want to, I would ideally wait for this to cool. Um, it's fine if you can also drink it 
drink it warm. So I'm just gonna pour a little bit in here. So here we have our three drinks. So pretty. There's a rompope. Let me just put the camera up on, on the top so that you could see all of them. Look how pretty. A little Mexican and Puerto Rican flair. And oh, I'm so excited. If you if you all made it, or, let's see. I don't know where to start with. Maybe I'll start with the rompope. Mm, it's so good. I think I prefer it chilled though. Mm, it's very cinnamony. I really, it's really nice. And I'll start with the warm. I love the poncha. This feels like home. So good. Let's see those of you that are making it. Anybody have any, any favorites? And then our little coquito. Oh, that's good. Um, preferred ratio of booze to coquito rompope. So this one for the recipe, um, I would do like an, I would this, I put a cup of, of um, a cup of rum with this and it was, you know, you could see the, the batch, it was a can each of the cream, the evaporated milk and the, um, and the condensed milk with a cup. I think this could use a little bit more. So maybe like a cup and a half. Um, because I can't really taste it. although maybe that you can't taste it and then you'll have enough co coquitos and but I would say maybe try it try it with a cup and then add a little bit more if you if you if you'd like um for the for this oh I mean for for the rompope um would you maybe just a little bit less alcohol I kind of like the the really cinnamony taste of the of the rompope you know as as is um but typically for so let's see for for what did I do? I did, I did a quarter of the recipe that was sent out. So I just did a little bit. And I typically I would use a third of a cup of rum or tequila um, for a quarter of the recipe. So so it's about, you know, so it's about a cup, a little over a cup. So it's about the same, maybe a, maybe a cup and a half, cup and a quarter, a cup and a half of booze typically, but start out with a little bit and then taste it. Because if you add too much, then you can't go back. Any other questions? It is a great, such a great gift. These are these are a really um, gifting this for the holidays is I think it's a great idea. And this bottle is from Ikea. But who wants to go to Ikea right now? Anybody else, any comments or questions or th thoughts? Um, I caught something from earlier in the chat when all the questions were coming at once. Um, can the coquito be made the day ahead? Oh, the coquito can be made, coquito will last for months. So absolutely, the coquito could be made the day ahead, two weeks ahead, you know, yes, absolutely. Definitely make it ahead. And then, you know, drink it really nice and chilled or on ice. Anything else? Well, thank you. Thank you all so much for, um, for coming. I hope you really, I hope you enjoy the class. Um, list of the origin and the ingredients. Oh, Gina, hola. Um, Yes, I will. I, I could send that. I could follow up. Um, Morgan, I can send you a list of the origin of, of a lot of the ingredients um, because they're so they're so interesting. These things that we think are so typically, you know, Mexican or typically, you know, Puerto Rican with the coconut, the Caribbean, you know, there's so many things come from from all over the world. Um, so. So, yeah, I, I will. I will definitely do that. Perfect. And with that, I. Um... I just want to say thank you again, Maite, for such a lovely class and learning experience and all these delicious drinks. Um, just as a reminder, again, I'll be following up with everybody with an email. So I'll resend the recipe and anything else that Maite sends me as far as the origin. And I will be sending a survey for um, the Library Innovation Lab grant. And you know, it also helps us if you liked this, and I think we all did, um, we know to plan stuff like this again. <laughs>
So thank you all. Thank you all and happy holidays. Bye everybody, Bye. thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Morgan. Thank you, Maite. Thank you so much. <laughs> Bye.